So thanks very much for jo uh, joining me, John. Um, this is John Lilly, who is the chairman of the People's Mosquito, which um, usually John and I meet to chat and discuss how things are going, and he gives me an update at air shows. But of course, this year, none of that's happening to, to our eternal frustration, of course. So, um, but we've got this opportunity to, to catch up and we can share it with everyone as well. So let, let's start right from the beginning, John. How, how did you get interested in the mosquito? What's your background with it? Oh, good question. But first of all, thanks for inviting me on to these uh, video podcasts that you're doing. Uh, it's really good of you. And yeah, we normally sit, sit, uh, we're either standing in a red hot airfield or a very wet airfield, aren't we, somewhere? Yes. Or at a veteran's book signing having a quick catch up and it's really good as well to get books from Fighting High because you do a fantastic selection to keep uh, readers uh, avidly collecting as I do every year. So uh, good, good, to, good to speak again. Yeah. Mosquito, how did I get into it? Um, from a very small boy, I've been uh, into aeroplanes because I was born and grew up in um, Doncaster, South Yorkshire and the airfields of the RAF near me is RAF Finningley. And when I was old enough to be allowed out, probably not old enough to be allowed out, but used to cycle over uh, several miles to Finningley to watch the Royal Air Force, you know, and um, I think by that stage, it was a training base for some of the flight training schools. But as a baby, my parents used to sort of, um, I wouldn't say grumble, but maybe gritted teeth when I woke up in the middle of the night because a Vulcan had gone very low over the house mm. on a night operation uh, back in the late 60s. Um, and, and my uncle got involved with the air show set up as a plumber. He used to uh, supply all those sort of water barrels and outdoor facilities that we need at air shows. And so I was really privileged to get like pilot's tent enclosure tickets and things and really get up close to aeroplanes. So it, it's from there really is a boy a dream. Uh, so that's the interest in aviation. And, and, and why the mosquito? Um, it was um, uh, later in life, I got involved with restoring aircraft at the Imperial War Museum in Duxford. So I did 10 years there. And one of the aircraft I worked on was TA-719, which is a target to Mozzie in the ceiling. And I spent one week of a, I took a week off my holiday, my day job. And I spent one week on my own, basically keying in, sanding off the, orig, the, the paint that I'd put on a previous scheme. And literally centimeter by centimeter, lovingly caressed this aeroplane and helped restore it. So I think I fell in love with the mosquito then. I really got to understand the design, the ingenuity of it, how it helped win the war effort, and what an important aeroplane it was. Uh, to, to in World War Two, mm. so I fell in love by, you know, touching and getting involved from a love of aviation. But then it, it really occurred to me around 2012 that this aircraft was missing from the skies. So, you know, so uh, so that sort of turned my attention back into thinking, well, how how could we bring a, an aeroplane back? Yeah, and. Uh... I think bringing a mosquito back to the air show. The air shows need a boost. I, I think there's no question. Mm. Now, now we don't have the Vulcan flying. And you know, when we had the two Lancasters, we saw what an impact oh. that made. And I think getting a mosquito back in the air would have a similar impact with regard to the air shows. It, it's commonly, you know, if you did a straw poll at an air show, it's probably be up there. It's certainly the top two of aircraft people want to see back into the skies, Absolutely. you know, as well. Very much missed since, sadly, our, our 299 crashed at Barton mm. um, quite a long time ago now, so yeah. the late 90s and stuff. So uh, another driving force was two reasons, really, to start this project. And first reason was actually, you mentioned Vulcan, it, it was looking at that model. And that model was, let's take an airframe, Let's use, let's get a business plan together that brings in not only sponsorship, not only, you know, quite wealthy benefactors, but gets the public behind it, buying things, uh, donating, putting the name on the wing or the Bombay or, or, or whatever. Mm. And, and that, you know, and, and Vulcan to the Sky, you know, and they went through a lot of trials and tribulations, but you have to say incredibly successful on that journey. And they raised over 25 million pounds in that time. 
to do that. And we'll come back to how much a mosquito is going to cost the UK public <coughs> and myself and everybody else who donates. But certainly you can get a lot of bang for your buck with a mozzie over that 25 million. But the good news is, is that Vulcan to the Sky set the model there. So I thought there's a, there's a business model to follow. And there certainly is the, the, the love of aviation heritage. Outside of football, air shows is the next biggest outdoor event in this country. Yeah. Yeah. I know, you know, recently it's been challenged with obviously sad events at Shoreham several years ago and yeah. safety has been tied up. Not a problem with that at all. That's absolutely necessary. Um, but the industry is really, really uh, vibrant. And, and actually we have a great number of companies that contribute to that. So that was one factor. The, 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 the second factor was our friends down in New Zealand. They had they reinvented the, the, the secret ingredient, the moulds to make the fuselage. And then in 2012, 2012, 2013, you know, we saw a, a Mosquito FB6 go to the skies for the first time, you know, since RR299 crashed, uh, which is owned by Jerry Yagan. And it's now based over in Virginia Water in the United States. But that was rebuilt, you know, with... Um, you know a good amalgamation of two or three kiwi companies so it could be done so not only have you got a business model to raise the funds but you've also got the technology there as well right and and, and the key ingredient is the fuselage mold which we'll probably come back on to next yes yeah. in or during this interview anyway so those two things got me to uh, use uh, modern communications um, and use social media. And I, I put a tweet out in late 2012, it might have been Christmas actually, I must have been bored at Christmas. I said, who would like to join me in uh, restoring a mosquito? And here we are, and we'll, we'll go through that journey, I guess, in the next few questions. Yeah. But um, uh, it, it, what I can say at this stage of, of this, this chat is, it's all doable, and it's now down to bringing money through the door. Yeah. Sourcing an airframe then, or your, yeah. your, your, your starting point. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. can you give us a bit of detail about how that came about? Yeah, very lucky. I mean, obviously, um, not just ten years restoring RWM uh, aircraft. They also got involved in buying and selling parts and projects, selling them on as well. And I had a, an associate who, basically, around the time we were thinking about doing this project. <clears throat> said, oh, RL249, I think we can get you an identity. So yeah. um, RL249 is a post-war mosquito, an NF36, um, so built at the end of the war. But night fighters, uh, the mosquito night fighter, carried in anyway to the late 40s, early 50s, well, the meteors could come in. Mm. So, um, and in fact, mosquitoes were operating up to about 63, 64, I, I believe. Right. So, yeah, so in PR role, the photo recon role, and target to grow as well so you can see that you know from 1941 design she lasted a good 20 odd years which is remarkable considering the jet age was coming screaming in not long after world war ii mm. when you consider the vulcan was designed in the 50s you know so she did well as a design mm. but rl249 night fighter uh, 947 crashed on take from culture shoal they had a double engine failure with some issue with <clears throat> one particular part of the Merlins, which was subsequently rectified from the crash, so some good came out of it. Yes. Watching, she crashed in woodland uh, several miles uh, from the airfield, and um, in and there was a few witnesses, and uh, like you may have seen in the six three three squadron, the mosquito squadron films, the crash mosquito, the flames starting. You know, sadly, that was happening for real, and. Um, uh, the, the sort of navigator was inside and the pilot went back and some people helped him, got him out. And he got the George Cross for that. Okay. Sadly, the chap passed away, you know, not long after that from his injury. Right. And the, air, the aircraft was basically recovered, pulled into the perimeter. Uh, usable bits were pulled off as they do, you know, cannibalized mm. them, all the bits. And then the airframe was used, it wasn't badly burnt, the, the airframe was then extensively used as kind of like an instruction airframe, as a lot of these things did. Mm. And then the, the, the RAF decided that Coltershaw would become like an air fighting unit for jet fighters. So they were going to extend the main runway and get rid of the old scissor runways. 
and our aircraft was sat on the perimeter by this stage, a bit of a derelict hulk. So no, they didn't decide to move it, put it, you know, transport it away. Um, quite as often happened as people have seen, uh, we look at it now back in horror, don't we? When you see them chopping up old World War II aeroplanes at the scrapyard and that, I know, I know. We're all going, oh my God, like this. No, they, they dug a big hole, stuck it in a hole and set fire to it, Steve. <laughs> Filled it in, <laughs> then pulled the perimeter of the fence back. So it was sat in a farmer's field until uncovered in the early 2000s. Right. So we bought the mortal remains and identity, RL249. Okay. And under current CA regulations, you can take an identity and you can remanufacture or restore. You know, and this is where we often get purists saying, "Oh, well, it's not a mus- it's not real then," sort of thing. Mm. Um, but the counter argument that is, there's some very beautiful Battle of Britain era Mark One Spitfires, which have probably got one percent content originality, especially certain famous ones that came off Calais beaches, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the CAA, you see. That's the identity of the aircraft, and you can, as long as you remanufacture to the original engineering specifications for the mark, you know, you 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 can create your mosquito back, and that's where the our CA regulations really help bring back this 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 beautiful heritage. Yeah, you're going to adapt it slightly into a different kind of mark, aren't you? Is that yeah? Where you're going to where you're going to present it is going to be slightly different. Absolutely. Um, to me, all mosquitoes are fantastically beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the later marks of Night Fighter developed this very bulbous nose, or the bull nose, as a lot of people refer to it. And some people say, oh, yeah, the ugly one um, and stuff. But the reason why I had this big bulbous nose was because the radars got bigger and bigger and more efficient, you know. Um, and this had an American Mark 10 radar from an original British design. Um, but we did a poll about four or five years ago when we just got started because a lot of people said when we bought the remains oh you're not going to do the ugly one are you and things like this so we said, well, we'll put it to a vote do you want it to be a bomber a photo recon a fighter bomber or a night fighter and the fighter bomber version beat it like three three votes to the nearest one you know what i mean it was, it was right. quite that's what our fans at the time wanted so yeah we're going to do an fb6 yeah, and the, the 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 squadron of the original airframe was twenty three squadron at the time in in Coltishall. but twenty three squadron has got a really glorious World War Two past. Mm. Mosquito from Malta in like from forty three onwards in, and kind of like in the intruder role. And in fact, they were the only squadron given free reign to take off and do whatever they wanted against the enemy from Malta, mm. like never Italy and stuff and then they moved to the uk july 44 to do what we call intruder and ranger missions of part of rf 100 group and rf 100 group was called the bomber support group kind of a, a kind of a soft name for it but what they did was as 23 squadron did they either hunted night fighters the german night fighters or they went to their bases and strafed and bombed them shot radars or and they did that day and night or they targets of opportunity so uh, they were there to harass and protect the bomber stream by taking away the enemy's ability to counter fight so even though it'd be an fb6 in world war ii colors 23 squadron it's it's going to be great to, and i want to we want to do that so we're going to code the airplane yp okay. and uh, we're still in touch with a veteran actually a guy called um, uh, george stewart is a canadian chap he's not often been over to the uk he's still with us like People like George Dunn and Colin Bell, who, you know, you know these guys really well. Yes. And, and aren't they all, and they're just fabulous characters, as you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we've got, we've got a bit of history there, to, yeah. to living history, I Absolutely. think, as an opportunity yeah. to recognise it. Well, that's what I, I mean, as a, as a publisher and a writer, I'm very much into story. Yeah. And um, there, there's a couple of stories here, isn't there? There's, there's, well, there's, a few, there's the story of the mosquito. There's the story of your journey and taking it mm. from what it is to getting it into the air again. And then you can apply stories to it with, with however you put you know, your, your squadron codings. Are, and you can change them, obviously, and, and things like that. So, uh, so it's good That's to see That's what we to do. Um, back in the early days, the original plan was to make this a presentation aircraft as well. Um, so that was another bit from history that I was kind of borrowing, that story of the public went out there with Spitfire funds, didn't they? 
uh, encourage you to put a penny or a shilling or whatever it was in yeah. and factories did them and then organizations donated and then even island states of the commonwealth like mauritius did mm. but there was there was four what they call presentation aircraft world war ii of mosquitoes as well um that i'm aware of there might be more um and so the idea again is is that we by raising the money and restoring this aircraft that's where the name came from because it's the people that's going to power it you know so the people's mosquito thing is because it's for you it's for me it's for your 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 friend you know it's for everybody to enjoy you know and but it goes back to our heritage that even when we had nothing we're being bombed people would Anyway, look at the generosity of this country. Look at Captain Tom, for example. Yes, yes. It just, it, it just shows the true British spirit, doesn't it? Even today, mm. it's brilliant. Mm. And that's what we're seeing with this project. People coming up and saying, thank you, well done. And not only that, the stories of my auntie used to make this little bit in a little cottage factory. Yes. Or my dad was a carpenter making pianos and he went and made wings for mosquitoes. <laughs> you know, my grandfather was a pilot did 50 operate we've had honestly there is so many that that story behind yes coming yeah. coming through but it really resonates with today's struggles really does and it's, mm. it's that spirit isn't it it's that british spirit that comes yeah. through oh commonwealth spirit let's not forget lots of commonwealth crews flew and operated the mosquito there's three other mozzies in the air at the moment. Is, am I correct with that in the, around the world? Uh, is it three? Technically four. There's technically four. Okay. And are you, yeah. you, you liaising with them? Are, you, are they, yeah, are they uh, helping? Or? As required, really. Um, funnily enough, the Wing Commander Bill Ramsey was retired and he was the last captain of XH558 on the last flight uh, with Bill, uh, Martin Withers, sorry. Um, and... Um, Yes. Bill also used to fly the Lank in the BBMF before, and then and he was in bed. anyway. He, we're, being, we're we're in touch with uh, I think one of Jerry's pilots talking about operation of the aircraft today. So how they experiencing today? Right. So funnily enough, Bill got out the Vulcan pilot's operating manual that they wrote to display XH five five eight yesterday and shared it with us. And he says, this is the document we're going to be writing for the Mosquito. Obviously, oh, great. Replaced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not talking about four big engines, but two Merlins and stuff. Yeah. So yes, there's, there's an example right now today. There's also um, a couple of restoration groups that are doing statics and two have got ambition to do taxable Mosquitoes uh, in other countries. And we're actively talking with them because they've got information we don't have and mm. we've got information they don't have. Great collaboration. And, and yeah, and um, we were talking to Paul Allen's organization before he passed away as well about one or two things. So it's as, as and when required, to be honest. The, the community is small and well known, of course, and it, it makes sense to, um, you know, uh, to try and get everybody on side. Certainly for, for ourselves, because we hold 22,300 technical drawings. So it's not the full set, but it's pretty close. And we don't have all of them, uh, but we get a lot of requests uh, for that, you yeah. know, and support and stuff. And, um, and also as well, uh, we, get, we get a lot of modelers saying, can you give us a full set of your drawings so I can make a, mod an, a 130 <laughs> set, 160. And well, we have to explain, it doesn't quite work like that with an aero model. But anyway, but, but, but yeah, bits and pieces. And then things come up for sale that, you know, um, you, um, you can't, you know, and I'm, Currently negotiating and purchasing something which I will reveal hopefully in a few weeks' time when it arrives. Okay, which is quite right. interesting. So, the who's the team you've got working on the rebuild then? Uh, Retrotech. Um, so, Retrotech is down in, people say, where's that? We go, Northium, and they go, oh, where's that? We say, oh, East or Six. So, um, you know, you kind of turn left off the M25, don't you, over the Dartford Bridge or yeah. the Queen Elizabeth Bridge, should I say? Uh, and um, yeah, about another hour and a half later, <laughs> down in the, you're there. But Retro Tech is edited up by Guy Guy Black and supported by his wonderful wife Janice, and um, they've been restoring military aircraft of all sizes, haven't they? For ooh, God, I think Guy's been doing it for 30, 40 years Absolutely, now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and his most recent um, uh, achievement was a World War One DH9 bomber. So another, it was the Airco DH9 
Mm. Still a Diablo in design. Yeah. Uh, 1918 technology bomber. And we're doing a 1941 technology bomber. Mm. So it's amazing how in that short space, that 30 years, you know, what, what happened um, and stuff. But that's war. War can develop technology. Uh, and he's done that to a meticulous standard. Good thing about Retrotech is not only it's the experience, he, he holds a lot of parts, a lot of manuals. So it's not just drawings. You need to have, you know, air publication manuals, operating <laughs> manuals. And, and you have a, a draw, the drawings are one part of the jigsaw. And to be honest, the, the, the AP manuals from the manufacturer then tell you how to put that jigsaw together. Mm. You know, it's like when you did McCart. I'm trying to say, I remember mean, Meccano and those things. We, we, all, we can remember Meccano, yes. We can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was great stuff. You we'll learned engineering with it. That's yeah. what you learned. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so he, a guy's got a lot, a lot of resources like that. But also as well, he carries several tons of, you know, you and I will think, well, it's a, it's a box of nuts or bolts. But they're air grade, new old stock, you know, air, yeah. air grade quality bolts that are, are perfectly fine to fit on it, you know. And if you have to go out in the market and have those made, then it's 10 times the cost, really. Um, so there's that. But also, what, what I, I liked about Retro Tech and meeting with Guy is his passion. And he's an engineer with a big E. And what comes across as well is safety. And when we're dealing with people's money, charity money as well, and everybody wants safe to be number one, you know, those, the, his guys are, are, are actually bonused and encouraged. I made a mistake. Yeah. And, and you, you, you know, so, oh God, we've just, sorry, John, we just wasted a thousand pounds of your money, but it would be dangerous. You want to hear that, not the, oh, it could be all right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, so, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and everybody wants to, yeah. So that, yeah, and I'm sure lots of organizations exactly the same, but that really did strike me. And also, Guy, you know, Retrotech carries a CAA remanufacturer's license right. for, for historic yeah. airplanes, uh, yeah. air, aircraft, you know, and, and they do a lot of subcontracting work to a lot of, a lot of well known established names around the world operating airplanes. So, not only that, Guy's got a personal connection. His father flew mosquitoes only for a brief period in uh, Burma and India during the war. Right. Um, but still, it was up there. Yeah. And he did mozzies and then bow fighters, and then I think the war finished. Uh, but his mom, funnily enough, got involved with 23 Squadron as well, and a little snoring where they were based. And his mom worked with Watson Watt. And for those who don't know Watson Watt is, he was kind of a, one of the pioneers of airborne interception radar, radar mm. technology. Mm. And mosquitoes and FB6s were fitted with a little like thimble nose at the front of the nose. And that was a, an interception radar for intercepting night fighters, the ash radar, I think it's called. So there's a photograph of guys moving in a RAF uniform in front of all these mosquitoes without the radar because they're not they weren't allowed to take the photographs in front because it was obviously really ultra secret back then, yeah, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, because they didn't want the enemy to know what they were doing. So his mum was heavily involved with that side and his father flying as well. And it's been, it's on his, I think the modern phrase is, it's on his bucket list. It's the one he wanted to do. Right. Okay. And, and I can't tell you his passion and attention to detail. Phenomenal. It's inspiring. Some of the materials um, he's needing, I mean, it's the current situation, the, the COVID situation, is that, is that affecting at all access to some of the the woods and, and that sort of materials or they Remember seem to be getting it. through it? Yeah, but we, uh, for, for the, for the moulds themselves, which we, because we possess the drawings, um, we chose Dulatong. Well, they chose Dulatong. I didn't choose it. They said, this is what we're going to use. Mahogany is now protected, kind of protected species. It's on the endangered list now, mahogany. Really? And it's phenomenally expensive as well. Mind you, Julatong's not far behind, I'll be honest. But, uh, but yeah, ethically now, it's not the right thing to do. Julatong actually is actually classed as a sustainable wood. So we ticked the nice green box as well, which is yep. fabulous. Yep. Um, and also, it, it, can, it can take those forces exerted when you glue and strap everything down on the fuselage. Um, they managed to find a supply in England open during COVID. One. <laughs> close enough by to deliver also guys moving from his uh, current place into a new uh, operation not far from his house and 
that's kind of been redesigned around the mosquito project to fit fit the fuselage in through another door and put the wing here and stuff but he's built like a production factory so there's a separate engine shop paint shop metal shop wood shop you know you know spares bay all that sort of thing so we once they'd done the original um jig and frame for the molds that was moved over to the new place and it's meant as well the guy and it's big enough workshop so the guy the guidelines are social distance as best as you can during this this time so there's been two or three working in a quite a large space doors open and all this and whatever yeah. so yeah we've we've been lucky uh the campaign to raise the money uh, which we might talk about in a little bit later, as, as, as sustained fundraising whilst their shows are off. And uh, it's gone very well. And it's also meant that, um, you know, and these guys have been able to work. So it's good. We've been able to keep at least a little part of the aviation industry turning. Yeah, yeah. Turning. So we, we have done. And um, the next update for the project's coming out this weekend. And I'm promised after this call, Steve, set of new photographs of what they've done this week all right so, okay you'll, you'll put those on the website you'll, you'll share those on the website okay yeah all right okay so now my understanding is your budget eight million is eight million. Uh, is, is what i picked up so how are you yeah, doing it's still eight million yeah <laughs> yeah um it is still oh, eight million so. enormous amount of money obviously it is it, it is yeah. it is it, uh, and, and in that million we, we're factoring about 20 25 percent to raise money you know, because as you know, attending air shows isn't free. No. <laughs> uh, paying hosting fees for a website is not free. No, no, no. Right. Of merchandise is not free and things like that. So you have to accumulate, you know, uh, speculate to accumulate, sorry. Yeah. Sort of thing. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, um, we've done a, we're about half a million or the plus now, actually. I have to get the latest figures of Alan, my FD. About half a million into that. And it's been, it's been a, but every year we've kind of double digited like this. Now this year we've done that. It's gone better. Um, dare I say, the graph is, it, it's been positive this year with our air shows. Air shows is a way to reach out to newer audiences and expand your audience. Yeah. Uh, we've built a database up of nearly 5,000 names, I believe, um, club members and people on the newsletter. And we decided working with Retro Tech to uh, this year was the year that we needed to start building. No matter what happened, before all COVID came in, was a big year. So we broke up the production of the aeroplane into 12 phases. We've, they're called campaigns. And each campaign is going to be named after a particular mosquito operation of the war. So we right. kicked off with Jericho 2020. Yeah. Our operation Jericho, which is the Radon Amion, for all you guys who know your warbird history. Yeah. So that was a uh, treetop height raid, a precision raid to free a load of guys in facing death from the hands of nasty people, the Gestapo. And that's an online campaign. It's got its own landing website. And, you know, and in it, we're asking for a donation from £25 all the way up to £5,000, you know, a lot of money, for Ooh. various access and uh, reward packages for that. Right. And, 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 you know, there's a bit of a, Oh, oh, Mrs. Moment, is it actually going to fly? But we've done eighty thousand pounds, nearly, nearly eighty thousand in eight weeks. Right. So, so that's live so now on the. Website. That's live now. That's live now. So okay. that's really boosted the, the campaign. And normally, that would be running with air shows as well. So we're mm. really fortunate for that. We are a very lean organisation. So before Operation Jericho came in, we'd already. What I mean by a lean organisation is none of us take salaries. I'm a volunteer. I have a, I have a job. I've, you know, all the guys have a day job. All the girls have a day job. All the volunteers have got, uh, you know, something else going on. We take minimal expenses. Like if we're doing a three-day air show, you need somewhere to sleep and have a shower. You know, and we'll, we feed people, obviously, that work for us and that sort of thing. But generally, our costs are low. We don't have expensive hangars or office blocks or anything like that. And we've done yeah. that deliberately because it's, it's your money. You know, and, and we're trying to put every penny within. So over the last number of years, we've kind of raised about, you know, it's been like 30 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, 120, 150. 
you know, and, and so far this year, it's already with the campaign and the start of our financial year, it'll be over six figures and probably climbing right. as well. But what we're able to do with RetroTech is build in these 12 chunks. Yes. So the £250,000 for Jericho we're aiming to raise by the end of September, okay, is to finish, we'd already started the mould, we'd pumped £82,000 into getting the drawing, the lofting drawings done, the bulk, initial bulkheads done, all the steel made and everything else. Mm. You know, a lot of that is labour time to, to, you know, get it right. Mm. And, um, and now we're, that's why we're doing these regular updates because as the money's coming in, you're going, oh, they've filled that in. Oh, they've added that section. So lie, almost live, it's probably every week or every few weeks, people are seeing it. it they're actually seeing you're putting the money to use. And that's very important for the public. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, like I said, and, uh, you know, we're not, we're not carrying heavy expenses. And then, so half a million doesn't, it's, it's now a nice chunk into that eight million overall target. May it stretch? It may. You know, yeah, well. you know, for example, the thing I'm trying to purchase at the moment will probably save us twenty thousand pounds. If that's a bit scratch. Right? Yeah. But if yeah. I pay it for what I'm gonna pay it for now, that then saves a bit of that budget, you see. Yeah. Yeah. But on certain things, it, it, it's actually not the wood. It's it's it, the things that are needed to finish a mozzie, as a, as all the restorers in New Zealand will tell you, is the metal bits. You know, there are there is metal, the ailerons are metal. You know, the, uh, the, the, the frame for the cockpit's metal, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. The undercarriage is metal, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, but it's all achievable. It's yeah. not unachievable. And if, if we don't have a part, we have a drawing. If we don't have a drawing, we know somebody who has a drawing. Yeah. You know, what I mean? Or there are things in museums to scan. So it's a lot of money. But by doing it in chunks and with, with RetroTech, that's what I'm saying, we're contracting them campaign by campaign. So we never overextend ourselves. Yeah. They're yeah. never left out of pocket as well. Yeah. And, and so therefore, as a commercial deal, so far it's working. Yeah. So, to, so 12, you've got these 12 phases. So to, yeah. phase 12 is, then it's up in the air, is it? Absolutely, yeah. Straight, straight yeah. after we'll that. We'll be revealing yeah. more of that. So with this, this money that we're raising, we were asked for 250 that will actually give us another uh, pot of money to actually start ordering in the balsa and um, the, the Sitka spruce and the balsa and the ply to start making the fuselage. So our plan, you know, if, it's, if it carries on doing well, we, we might be asking before Christmas, hey guys, I want to make a fuselage right. in 2021. Yeah. And, once you, and then from there, what we're seeing is the project, it, it, it's been going a number of years, but it started with a tweet nothing <laughs> nothing yes. and and yeah it's taken time and and have we been dogged and determined and and, and not going away yeah have people said you're not going to do it yeah but we're still oh. here and yeah, we're building yeah. a and we're, and we're now building a mold to build a fuselage so a lot of people ask us it might be a question you've got but i'll probably do. people have said what well hang on a minute john they've done three out of new zealand you're right there, there's, there's there's four flying Three of those were all rebuilt in New Zealand. Fabulous quality, uh, meticulous, um, flying very successfully in the United States for lovely wealthy guys. Um, you know, so just let everyone know that Jerry Egan's got one on the East Coast over in Seattle. The Flying Heritage and Combat Army Museum has got one. She's old Paul Allen, the late Paul Allen, should I say, before he passed away. And of course, there's Rod Lewis, I think, down in Texas, Galveston with the latest one, which is a beautiful um, coastal command. It's a Banff strike one, isn't it? Right. With under rail rockets. And that's superb detailing, you know. And the fourth one is actually an original airframe. It's a B-35 at Spartan Air Services. And that's owned by a guy called Bob Jen. But that, that, that's, I think, it's got limited hours, I guess, or whatever, and engines. But, you know, it, 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 it was airworthy. I don't know what it is now. But... Going back to this thing, you say, well, why are you not getting the Kiwis to do it? And we could. And that was the original plan. Mm. But we started, as we got more and more into the drawings and more and more working and sitting down with retro tech, it kind of dawned on us that everything was there to build our own mold. And, you know, you'd have to, there is a cost of, you'd have to have a CA liaison guy and all that. Pay. The American ones are done an FAA system. 
And, you know, and don't get me wrong, the New Zealand guys can build to any country spec, but our paperwork compared to the, that's the CAA paperwork, say, as a guide. That's UK CAA paperwork. Mm. Why? Our, they say our airspace is smaller, EASA rules, whatever. Um, you know, it, it, and that's, that's part of the big cost of this. So you would still have to satisfy that. And there's no doubt the, the guys in New Zealand could turn their hand to anything in any country. Mm. But the fact is we had the drawings and the lofting drawings to build mould here. And when, I, when we kind of crunched the numbers, you know, by doing it that way, and then you've got to put it on a ship, and then you've got to send people out to inspect it and vice versa, it came out cost neutral to do it here. Yeah. And the other thing was, it was originally designed and built in this country. Right. Right. That's why we changed tack and we were quite brave and went, let's do it here. Spoke to Guy. Guy said, yeah, let's do it here. Why not? And I guess once you're, once you're up and running with it and you're up and flying with it, you're, you've built a, a, a knowledge base in this country. It's going to require maintenance and all those kind of things. So you, the skills are being learnt again. And yep. they're, going to, they're going to be retained that you can access as well. So it's in a, you know yep. you're investing in that not that that particular yeah. knowledge base. We have we have three uh, pillars to our organisation. You know, um, uh, to fly, uh, to remember, to educate, or with that order. My other directors are probably winty now. I've got it in the wrong order now, but they're the three pillars. Under the to, to educate bit is not only the heritage to remember the memory of our forefathers and four, four grandmothers or whatever. You know. Mm our families but but also to you know try and inspire the youth so we're, we're very keen to develop stem projects and we're hoping to tap into our new friends at airbus to help with that yeah. um we, we already run kind of a stem project one of our volunteers is a is a he, he's a teaching assistant at school and there's a mosquito club at one school would you believe now and we offer a pack for other schools to learn about it but the engineering it's the first composite combat aircraft and people talk about f-35 today in the uh, you know the lightning two mozzie did it first in 1941 42 mm. you know it's composite with the way it's, it's wood instead of modern i don't know carbons and all sorts of exotic materials and you know and, and it and it was such it was world's first multi-role combat aircraft as well mm. you know it, it set out that way but very quickly it became so because of how adaptable it was you know, to, to virtually every type of operation. And, and also they use things like radio frequency techniques to, intro, to blast at the fuselage, set the glue off. Well, you and I stick our beans in a microwave. That's the same technology, <laughs> chucking an electronic brick. And they did it on the Mosquito. So you can tell that heritage piece to inspire. And one of our aims, and we, we were very proud at saying this, once we build for more head of steam and money, and Guy Black's really into this, we want to put an apprentice on this and fund an apprentice through the build. Yeah, great. Yeah. You know, and, and guess what? They're taking our drawings, which are all scanned in digitally. They're using them and they're still putting together a CAD one. You know, and, that, and yeah. I can take all the bulkheads and that have all been cut by a precision CAD. Where right. the, it would have been done with routers and, and, and all that sort of other machines as well. Yeah. But it is, t it is still learning the old stuff, but also a little bit of new as well. Um, but you know, it's like, it's like the engines, you know, that, that, that kind of engine is not out there anymore. So, and we all want these airplanes to live. So it's incredibly important to the project to get young people involved. Yeah. And we run a TPM club. We have actually got very, very young, several couple of years old members already, which really pleases me. Mm. Well, that's a, you're, you're creating a legacy it's going to keep going for when you start on the second aircraft obviously well this is it because uh, <laughs> I, I did have a rather interesting email from somebody who said what are you going to do with it after you, what are you going to do with the moulds afterwards are, are they available and yes they are for a price if you'd like to contact them <laughs> <laughs> yes well yeah. you know I'm sure yeah, but that's true though isn't it they're, they're there yeah. You know, and, and, yeah and there's learning you know, yeah. as well. There's no doubt we, 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 there'll be mistakes made, but lessons learned as well. Well, there's so, any, any project, there's mis mistakes yeah. made, and that's, that's part yeah. of it. So the big question, obviously, is uh, can you sort of give an idea of a, a time frame for this, or is, it, is that just too, too difficult to say so at the moment? If it continues, funds keep coming as they are and the work we're doing, you know, 
I said if, if Jericho went well, then we're probably a good six months into a five year plan. So, you know, I mean, yeah, I can't promise. No, you can't. Yeah, but yeah, 2024, 2025, yeah. you know, and, and I'm sure there's, you know, I may have said five, seven years before on these things, but it, 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 you know, again, we never experienced COVID, but for us so far, COVID has not stopped the project. In fact, it's flourished mm. um, and stuff. Um, so we'll see. Um, uh, but it, 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 it I think one of the things I put in the updates is donations equal progress. Progress equals donations. So you get this virtuous oh, yes. because it's it's giving that confidence to people and yeah. stuff. And all I can say to people is come and see where we're at. So new, latest photographs will go out this week, you know. And if people want to get regular news, just go on to People's Mosquito web. You just type, type People's Mosquito into Google. We end yeah. up in the top three. Yeah. Um, of your search engine, if not top one, and um, there's a there's a sign up newsletter section, and you can get all the latest. We'll, we'll put the um, the people's we'll put the web address. Oh, thank you. Up, up, up on the video as well. Yeah, there's lot. I mean, loads of information on the website, and there's various ways also for the funding as well. You've got a couple of other there's other projects. You can get your name on the the mould. Yeah, Is that and you and this Amazon Smile. I, I think I saw. Ah, well, yeah. So. So um, if you go on to, let's do Amazon Smile first. So instead of going onto Amazon, if you type in Amazon Smile or smile.amazon, it's the same website, but you can choose a charity of your, you know, your selection. So you type in the People's Mosquito, please put the apostrophe S as I found out, because uh, it doesn't find okay. you otherwise. Um, and then literally, yeah, if you buy a qualifying product, whether you're buying, I don't know, a DVD, a book, or a, I don't know, a bike <laughs> by anything these days coming online yeah. then a percentage tiny bit of that comes to us and um, we, we've only started doing it in the last few months and it's now bearing fruit for us oh, you know, good. just yeah. by you're doing nothing there's an old one called easy fundraising as well just google that easy fundraising similar sort of thing if you like going argos or you book a hotel through the site still get the same prices yeah. but they, they give you like um, 0, 0. 0.0 whatever percentage. But again, it's that volume and, and, yeah, it's, and it, it's better than nothing. Yeah, but right. yes, um, if, if you go on to, um, go into People's Mosquito forward slash campaigns. So www.peoplesmosquito, all one word, forward slash campaign. Yeah. Um, it takes you into the Jericho campaign website. And yeah, there's packages there. We do one at, at 25 100 pound 500 pound thousand pound up the way to the stellar 5000 25 pound will get you a certificate and a campaign badge so you've contributed 100 pound gets you name uh, on a the, the bottom of the molding like a roll of honor type thing 500 pound will get you name actually on a piece of the jewel you know the nice shaped bit on the mold with all the people on there Two thousand pound and five thousand pound basically gets you. Well, five grand gets you your own mold, basically. <laughs> you know, you play on. We have had. By the way, it's very important to say if you want to put in memory of, in dedication of, when you sign up, there's a comments box to do that. But if you have paid, if you're if you are listening, and you've paid, and you do want to dedicate, you haven't do that. Just contact us. We are keeping an active list of all these dedications, right. and that's very important for us to do that and you would appreciate yeah. um, as, as well and, and yeah you can um, you can join the club and it's an annual membership is 25 pounds a year for that we publish a quarterly journal which is very i have to say and i'm blowing her own trumpet it's a nine have you got the latest copy i think i have actually no i'll send it to you it, okay. it's due at our pr uh, director and his team have done a it's getting like a quality magazine, to be honest. Good, yeah, good. Uh, and, um, you know, some of our club members are saying it's worth the membership alone, um, things like that. And, and oh, we do an online shop. So we do sell some books from Fighting High. Oh, I'm going to return the favour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably can do some more. Yeah. Um, as well as T-shirts, caps, things like that. So funnily enough, every time I do an update every week, the online shop goes nuts. On the weekend, yeah, yeah. especially yeah. as we've got Father's Day coming up, you know, and all that. When you, yeah. you know, what do you get dad this year? Well, get him a piece of mosquito, is what I yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there are many ways you can get involved. And also, we also look for volunteers. So, when we're doing air shows, and it's volunteers week, 
this week, I think. Somebody reminded me yesterday. Okay. Alan, my finance director. So it's only worthwhile saying is that this is not possible because everyone does this in their own time. And we have 50, 60 odd volunteers. So many thanks from me and the board for their help. Without you, it's not possible. And these guys come on, you know, it's like at air shows. You're either getting burnt or you're getting drowned or in between, you know, and you're, you're doing what, 12, 15 hour days of these things. And we love it. We do love it. But it's a lot of hard work. And these guys turn up rain, snow, sleet, shine, whatever, and really are passionate about it. And, um, and that's what keeps me going. And, it, and it's meeting people and connecting with people, you know, that, that does it. And it's just lovely to give something back. Yeah. That's what it's about. That's exactly what the project's about. Well, yeah, well, it is, as you say, it's the people's mosquito and you're involving there people you and they're, they're the ones who are driving it forward. And let's be honest, think, it was a, World War II was a people's war and it was yeah. out that grit determination. Our world today may be very different. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Brilliant. Well, I think, uh, well, great. I, th I think that's brilliant, John. I think uh, I, I'm a massive fan of, of the project. I think it will make a, a marked difference to um, air shows and events. Uh, if we can get them there, I think numbers are going to be massive. And um, I look mm. forward to when it, when it kicks off. But it's not just about, again, it's not just about that one last event. It's this journey no. that that all the guys are going on to get it to the positions. And yeah, you know, I, I like the way you phased it too. There's little targets there and, um, you know, an excellent, excellent way of and doing excellent. it. So. And, and we're going to do a campaign badge for everyone so people can feel involved. So oh, right. like I say, yeah. if you put a few pounds in, it helps. It yeah. really does help. And yeah, the next, the next chapter after, you know, let's get it, let's get it, get it to a good flying state, but then we want to operate it, mm. you know, and we want to operate it with a lot of accessibility and in a similar way into BBMF, we might change colors every few years to tell yeah. another story. Yeah, exactly. you know, and, and those stories are worth telling as you know, more than anyone. Yeah. Well, that is. And it keeps, keeps the memory alive, keep, keep, keeps the projects yeah. alive. So, um, well, thanks for your time, John. I think that that's brilliant. We'll stick a link up, um, on the video we got here and then, uh, um, and best best of luck and let's you know let's catch up again when uh, when you're going to launch the next what's the next phase you're going to be doing after jericho do you well basically it's going to it will be um we're hoping to have like that little bit of bunts when we start the fuselage so really it'll be then raising money to do the, do the fuselage fund right okay. the next big one after that and then right. after that maybe wings or tail section and then power plant you, you, you get the drift yeah yeah but it's got, isn't, it, isn't it isn't it great to be having that thought process from as you say from an initial tweet but now yeah. uh, it, it's happening it's going to happen and the discussion is about detail it's not about grand scheme as such it's about no we're at that deep now we need to go to that detail now we yeah. so it's generating its own momentum so uh, fantastic congratulations no, and thank you very much for having us i appreciate your time that's right and i'll um i'll see you on the other side maybe at some point this year somewhere <laughs> at dutchford or whatever if not oh. I'll, see you, I'll see you in 2021 Indeed. Hopefully see it, Dutchford. If not, yeah. next year, mate. All okay. the best. Thanks, John. Cheers. Bye-bye.